This is a Marconi uh, 2305 um, modulation meter. I've got another one of these. Um, and I bought this one from the same a seller that was selling the original one. This is for spares and repair. I was initially going to buy it about a year ago and decided I probably wasn't, wasn't going to use it. Um, but he is, he's basically said to me, well if you want it, he's got back in contact with me and said if you want it, um, pay the shipping, I'll send it to you free of charge. So I thought, well, it's pretty worth it for spares. It's not the sort of thing I use an awful lot. Um, it does have its uh, uses. It's quite useful for checking and verifying calibration of the uh, um, frequency generators and things like that. It does have synod and uh, distortion on it, which is uh, quite useful. But it's more on an RF sort of side of it rather than the uh, HP8903 which is uh, an audio analyzer. The problem with this one is it, it looks like, well it's definitely got a fault with it, it was sold as a uh, spares or repair. Um, when you power it up it defaults to cal. Um, now I think that's normal, the other uh, unit I have that has, doesn't do that and what it's doing at the moment it's running through a calibration routine just to make sure it's okay which it isn't and it should come up with a couple of error messages. Um, currently trying to ascertain what's actually wrong with it um, but it looks to me, when I was run, using it last night uh, I was injecting a signal into it, if you inject a strong enough um, RF signal into it, it will, it will work reasonably well, it will give you a reasonably accurate figure um, but the, oh, there's a couple of problems, the first problem is I can't get the uh, oven controlled crystal oscillator to work run at the correct frequency, it's slightly off um, out of out of calibration and it is adjustable but it doesn't pull up enough to uh, to be correct. Now it's just past the calibration but it's come up with this error message um, usually it will say pass and come up with a and this, this is an error message, I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, what I'm saying is the signal, you put a signal, RF signal in and it will show up the correct signal um, and if you select FM modulation and modulate with the, one of the signal generators it will come up with the correct modulation. However, if you put it in AM, uh, whatever AM modulation you give it, it won't show the correct reading. So what I'm trying to work out is what's wrong with it. I mean, it could be something a bit, a bit beyond me, but I'm gonna, I was going to have a quick look anyway. Um, now one of the first tests it does for fault finding is it, if it suggests there's a problem with the AM, which it clearly is, um, you're supposed to uh, run this procedure, and you you enter the you press enter. Uh, the keyboard's all a bit manky. Twelve, and it should produce on the IF output here a signal with a square wave in person. Now I don't know if you can see it on the scope. It will only run it for a short period. You can see on the scope. And it's dropped it out again. Let's try to run it again. So enter. And what it's saying is it should produce um, a one and a half meg uh, one and a half megahertz with a one one kilohertz square wave envelope. So let's try it again. And you saw it briefly do it, and then it and it dies, and that's failed. So it looks like to me that's there's the normal carrier, there's your carrier, but it's not producing the AM um, modulation that we're looking for. So straight away that's that's a fail on that. So what I'm trying to do is I'm running through a flow chart it's giving me. Um, now I don't know how I'm gonna if I'm gonna stick with this. This is all a bit sort of you know it's not it's not like a signal generator or a spectrum analyzer or something like that. It's not a particularly useful piece of equipment, but it's it's quite good for experience and quite um, quite an interesting piece of equipment. Uh, so it says set the AM. To set AM calibrator running, press Enter 12. The AM calibrator signal is then generated for about 10 seconds and then switched off. The presence of the signal should be monitored externally by means of an external BNC adapted oscilloscope probe and the oscilloscope to examine the IF output. A 10 second burst of trough of 5 to 1 ratio with a correctly triggered oscilloscope, the ratio measured is measured significantly accurately to determine whether the calibrator is apparently functioning or wildly wrong. Remove the, remove the top case of the RF box. On the AC2 main board, examine the drain of TR22 for a 1kHz switched waveform. 
If this is not present, work back to TR1, TR21, IC4, IC2, and then IC3, pins 6 and 15 on the latch board AB1 to locate the device is is pre preventing the 1 kHz signal from switching the FET TR22 which amplitude modulates the carrier repeat the replace the device that's faulty well I was trouble is I've got the carrier by the looks of it but I haven't got the um, it doesn't look like I've got the correct modulation I suppose what I could do just for comparison is I'll switch on my other modulation meter and just let it run through its uh, the strange thing is the other one doesn't run through its um, the same calibration procedure. So let's connect, let's connect this up to the IF output and do the same thing. This is what we're looking for. Excuse me a minute. Middle of the shot, I know. Enter 12. Now it should be. That's what. This is the waveform we're looking for. Well, actually, it looks exactly the same. Ah, oh, there it is. It's the triggering position. I don't know if you can see that on the scope. But it does that. Let's do it again. Really, you need to probably need a storage scope for this, but you can see it's trying to storage mode. No, it's, you've got this sort of like this double waveform, so you, the character looks like it is there, so I might have actually missed it. Let's run it again on this generator. Oh, okay. So it is there. So that part of it's okay. So. Uh, Run the calibrator. Is the I envelope correct? Yes. So we move on to six. Then, so we move on to the. F this is a flow chart to try and diagnose what's wrong with the AM, because it's AM detection that's the problem. So, let's uh, go through this. Move on to six. I don't know if that. What that actually means? Does that mean page six? Oh, fault finding flow chart six. The, oh, this is for the FM, but we know the FM works. So I think what I need to do is step back a bit. <coughs> Initially when I power it on, it comes up with that error message, and I just cycle the power again. Now this might be a real difficult fault to find, it might be really easy. Um, but let's just run it through. We're looking at this uh, left-hand display here. And this will be the one that will give me any fault codes. I think the meet, the display in the right hand screen gives you the uh, GPIB address, so I'm not worried about that. It's presently showing 71. Um, so I've got to look up error codes. Let's watch this, what it does. Running the end calibrator now by looks of it on the scope. It comes up with eight. Now, what it should do is say pass if it's good. So, let's try and find the error codes in the, uh, in the manual and see what we've got. Second part of the video uh, this is the voltmeter board uh, I've just removed from the this Marconi here. Now, funny enough, I've just done a calibration on my one I've used before. This has come up with a calibration error one. Now, this is the first board it's going to look at, that's the voltmeter board. Um, so I've removed that. When I removed that and powered it up, I got error one, which is exactly the same as the one that was working is now showing. Uh, so I thought, well, I'll start with all the basics, and I've took the board out and I can see it's had a couple of the capacitors here, you can see a capacitor here has been changed, and a capacitor here, um, so it's obviously been, had some recapping at some point. Now I'm taking off these, what these look like, little Philips capacitors. Now these are 22 UF, uh, just, I don't know, is it 40 volt? Just check again to make sure that uh, it is the right, it's definitely 40 volt at 22 mic. And I'm connecting, I'll connect it up to the uh, LCR 4261. And as you see here, the LCR is showing. This is out of circuit, bear in mind. Um, look at the capacitors, totally open. Uh, dissipation factors overranged, uh, and it's showing 225 nan. 
So that cap's totally open. So I thought, well, that's a good start. So maybe look, the capacitor's open. Then I've gone to the next capacitor and exactly the same. The capacitor's totally open. And looking inside the unit, you can see, but it looks like it's had a couple of caps replaced in the past. Um, here's one of the originals by the looks of it, but it looks like there's been some sort of like RS components replaced at some time. So I think a good start possibly is to replace these caps um, and of course it's also got those caps in the power supply board here um, this is part of the um, this is the EEPROM and processor side and I think this is the GPIB controller um, so I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to try and replace some of these capacitors um, and see what response I get from the uh, uh, from doing that uh, so it's straightforward enough, and they're easy enough to get the 40 mics, so I'm going to replace them probably 47s, oh, it should be absolutely fine. Uh, pop those in, um, and I'll check the capacitors in, in uh, circuit. I'll check these tants to make sure they're not short, uh, but they, they they rarely fail unless there's been a problem really with the power supply, I think. Um, they're saying that. They don't really fail, I suppose, because the Rodin Schwartz had a couple of them catch fire, so might be worth checking those for shorts. But certainly it's a recap. Uh, they all look like the t uh, 22 UF, so that's going to be straightforward enough. Um, so uh, yes, 22 UF, so I can replace them with the 22 F U capacitor. They probably won't be uh, axials; they'll probably be radials, but they should fit in okay. And we'll uh, power it up again um, and see if we get any better response from it, because at the moment it's just not responding to any input. Um, and that would explain the problem with the the second uh, generator. Probably runs quite in a warm, quite quite a warm area. So we'll uh, we'll sort that out and uh, go from there. So that I'm going through the paperwork and the manuals and trying to work out uh, a few things. One thing I've ascertained is the reason why the thing stops working after a while is the um, internal oscillator, which is an oven oven control crystal oscillator, uh, stops generating. And that's quite a common problem with these. Uh, uh, internal oscillators on, on these Marconi instruments and the same with my Marconi 2019 it's a known problem that the oscillators aren't that great and are prone to uh, just stalling um, so what I'm going to do this evening is I'm going to power the unit up uh, and just feed a signal in from the uh, signal generator, the Roden short signal generator um, and I'm going to feed in it's only a one meg signal and just see if I get any initial response from the unit Now, what I expect to see is um, response on on the screen and see the frequency read out here and then eventually I think the unit will what it will do is it will it will start to freeze there is an intermittent um, digit that goes missing on the frequency display that's another problem that I'm going to come to later so basically we've got three problems I think with the Marconi. We've got the problem where the internal oscillator, uh, the, uh, the reference of oscillator fails. We've got uh, no AM uh, modulation detection. And also we've got the problem with the display. And I'm going to address the uh, uh, external signal, uh, external, um, the, not external, the uh, reference oscillator first. Now I can feed an external frequency into the unit to bypass its internal um, reference and I'm doing that for my Marconi signal generator that's uh, just stabilizing now it's set at 10 megahertz with a 1 volt peak to peak uh, RMS signal 1 to 1 volt sorry 1 volt RMS signal fed into the back of the of the uh, uh, modulation meter so I'm going to power it up um, and it will go straight away into its calibration routine which is I'm not sure if that's a standard programmed mode on this, but certainly my other um, 2305 doesn't do that. So we're going to go through, and what I expected to see, and it might have changed, it might be deteriorating, but once it's once it's gone through the calibration process, if I press the auto-tune, we should see the frequency generated by the Rodin Schwartz, which is about 1.279 meg. Um, now, there's a couple of threads I've seen on the internet about the uh, internal oven control os oscillator and uh, it shows you how to strip it down and uh, do repairs on it and it's nice because a lot of them are sort of sealed in a metal case but this one's not, it's a plastic case so it's about to complete its um, self-test okay and it's come up with 
see there's a digit missing here but we don't know what it is so let's press auto tune no I press calibration again so I'm going to run through it again <sighs> Okay, it did initially come up with error one, which is um, 10 dB amplifier gain problem. Um, so let's have a look, see if we can get any uh, any any sense out of it at all. No, and we've got an error message up here, and I can't see what it is because the display is messing about. So I'm going to go and try and turn it to the internal uh, the external um, reference, and by doing that, you press uh, enter. Uh, that should, in theory, what I'm trying to do is get it to go over to its uh, next terminal um, oscillator. So I go enter one. No. And they do say that when it's running on a um, when the external or the internal oscillator isn't running, it will become sluggish, and it's, it clearly is. Let's see the way the meter's not responding. I'm not getting anywhere with this. I expect it to show up external um, oscillator, but it's not. So we're going to try and manually tune the frequency to um, 1.27961, enter. You see the frequency is missing here. No, it's just not doing anything of what it's supposed to do. And I've got the... If I can get that display back, it would be nice. This is the inside of the uh, oven controlled crystal oscillator at the Marconi 2305. Um, it wasn't oscillating at all, so I decided, well, it's sort of a bit of a do or die situation, so I'm going to strip it down and have a look to see what was wrong. Now, presently, I'm only running it um, basically without the heater en enabled. Um, it's pretty straightforward and um, simple circuit. Basically, there's a uh, this transistor here is all this transistor does here. This power transistor is acts as a heater, and currents are regulated by this um, op amp here via a thermistor on the mounted to the heat sink, which is the this is the chip here. This is the uh, I'll zoom in a bit more. This is the crystal oscillator here, so you can see a bit easier. Okay, so that's the uh, this is the crystal oscillator here. This is the op amp. This is the uh, the transistor that's heated, and that basically regulates the temperature and keeps the transistor um, the, the crystal at a stable frequency, stable temperature. Um, there's two parts of the circuit, and the other part of the circuit is the actual oscillator itself. Um, that's basically two separate circuits, and I can show you this on a on a uh, circuit diagram that uh, has been drawn by um, a Mr. Richard Smith, who's on the Antique Radio Forum. Um, let me just show you here and thank him I would like to thank him for drawing this circuit for making it um, a lot easier for people to understand the circuit well it's very basic 
a very simple circuit. We've got an oscillator circuit here. Here's our here's our oscillator um, crystal oscillator here, a crystal. We've got a five volt supply to here, and this is our ground point here. So basically, this runs as a freewheeling oscillator, and then we've got a trimming capacitor here, and this synchronization lead comes out the top here, and probably applies. I'm not entirely sure what this sync wire does, but it probably applies a slight DC bias from the uh, control on the back to trim the uh, trim the oscillator to to 10 megahertz. And you see on the right hand side here, this is the uh, the, the very simple circuit to keep the 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 um, unit. At stable temperature. Um, what we've got here is the transistor which is the heating element. This here is a, a 2.4 R resistor not a 2.4 K. So there's 12 volts here so there's a couple of watts, two and a half, three watts dissipated in this transistor um, and basically what it does is as the uh, the temperature rises here the re reduces the gain to the op amp, reduces the drive to this transistor and the transistor cools down as the temperature cools down it starts to re increase the gain and it's basically a closed loop um, amplifier there uh, to maintain the uh, temperature on the uh, oven control crystal oscillator. Now these are well known um, bugbear on these uh, Marconi test equipment, these little grey oscillators. My 2019 Marconi signal generator uses the same one but thankfully so far it hasn't caused any problems. So what at the moment it's running with a 5 volt supply externally and as you can see here I run you up to the uh, signal, um, where are we? You can see that, um, but the um, mark the, uh, yeah you can just about see that's not very clear I know, but uh, we're running at just over 10 megs. And when it was back in the box, it was running actually too slow. So what I'm going to try and do is to bring that up slightly faster than that with the trimming capacitor, which I'm going to do now. Um, and then I'm going to box it back up, reconnect it all up, and hopefully it will work correctly and work reliably. And it's clearly working fine now. Um, so let's just see if we can trim this up a bit, maybe get a little bit more speed out of it. So we're looking for something like 10 point, I don't know, well, let's see what we get anyway. Let's give it a little tweak. Okay, we've gone to three. Okay, that's, that's basically as fast as it will go. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to box it back up. Um, and then we'll uh, power the unit up again. And hopefully the uh, internal oscillator will run correctly. Um, we can uh, maybe get some sort of response out of the unit. And then the next stage will be, if this is a satisfa satisfactory repair, Basically, all it was is I've just referred a few joints and uh, moved some components around that looked like they might have been touching. I think it's been worked on before. Uh, sort some connections out, and then we'll we'll um, power it up, see how we see how we get on, and go from there.